This is a mock interview conducted by Forum IS Academy at New Delhi. The interview panel includes eminent academicians, retired bureaucrats, and other luminaries. The objective of program is to acquaint the candidate with the format and expectations of the personality test conducted by UPSC. May I come in, sir? Come in, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Please sit down. You are working in NTPC, huh? Yes, ma'am. And you're in Shakti Nagar. That's in UP, huh? Mirzapur ki paas. Yes. Okay. So, uh, what is this fuss about this Joshi Mutt? It's your tunnel that is causing all that uh, subsidence? It is, ma'am, one of the reasons, but not the only reason, since geographically Joshimat is situated on a glacier moraine, unconsolidated. So, if it is, it was not an environmental impact assessment done when you started that tunnel? Ma'am, the EIA and the clearances were taken. All taken. So, they didn't point out that it's on a, a glacial moraine? It was, but uh, there are other reasons to it. There was a technical fault in which we damaged one of the aquifers, which led to uh, increased rate of subsidence. Along with when that, was that? I do not know the timeline of it, but uh, there was news that NTPC's work had punctured an aquifer, which led to a larger rate of outflow of water than what was stipulated. Other so than then, should not some corrective action have been taken at that time? Yes, ma'am. Work should have been stopped and uh, proper measures should have been taken before further commencing the work, which was not done. What are the other reasons that you are saying for this subsidence? Ma'am, unsustainable uh, tourism and infrastructure development on a fragile ecosystem such as Joshi Mutt. What do you mean by unsustainable tourism? Unscientific and uncontrolled development no, of... No, specific. What does it mean? Building of hotels, resorts, roads, movement of heavy vehicles, hmm. uh, disregard to the natural plantations, hmm. deforestation in the nearby areas. Hmm. These would accelerate... These are the accelerating factors for hmm. this uh, subsidence. Hmm. Hmm. And what about the Chardham all-season all road? Nobody's talking about that. Not one report is talking about it. What about that? Yes, ma'am. Joshimat is on the way to Badrinath and also Hemkund Sahib. So the Chardham project. I'm not asking the geography. I'm asking you what about that road? Is it contributing or not? Because none of the reports have that. Ma'am, I agree that yes, it is contributing to this. It is one mm -hmm. of the factors too. So tell me how are the NTPC plant? What is to be done now in Joshimat? To the response, I would say short term measure would be a complete stoppage of any construction work and then uh, assessments to be taken of the damage and in the long term we have to adopt the principles of sustainable development in the sense of but the problem is not Joshimat Uttarakhand is sinking Kanprayag has sunk when you go to Kedarnath it's a massive debris now so it's it's actually the question is I'm asking should you be going in for more hydro, hydro plants at all on in Uttarakhand or not because you do the tunnel approach Everywhere, we're getting tunnels dug here, there, everywhere. So, considering that Uttarakhand used to be very surplus in power, is there a need for going in for more plants? In any case, why is why is is this is this a hydro plant? Is it a coal plant? This is a hydel power plant. So, why should NTPC be doing hydel? Ma'am, it is one of the uh, NTPC profiles contains hydel power plants. No, but NHPC is for that. Why should you be doing it? We also do it. NHPC is a separate entity which does it. We know that. Of course, we know it's a separate entity. NTPC has power plants and it also acquired... But why? I mean, if you are NTPC, there has to be some functional division of labor, right? Yes, I agree. That this is not renewable. Now tell me, what percentage of NTPC's portfolio is renewable? 65 gigawatt total, out of which 9 gigawatt is renewable. So percentage-wide, it would come out to approximately 15%. And do you have a target? Yes, ma'am. What is that? 100 gigawatt of total portfolio, out of which 40 gigawatt of renewable by 2030. 40% is our target going forward. And solar is also part of that? Yes, ma'am. So, where is, are you doing solar? Uh, Gujarat and Rajasthan mainly. How much is your solar target? Solar achievement? Solar achievement currently is 6 gigawatt, up, spread across so various So, out of sites. 9, 6 is solar? Yes, ma'am. And 3 is what? Three is wind, offshore wind. We are uh, into offshore wind. Huh. And then uh, biomass generation. Biomass is where? Biomass is in uh, UP and uh, Bihar. Where? We, where in Shaktinagar itself, we have the co-firing program. And in Bihar, since 
ओके वेरी गुड व्हाट इज ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन बाय द वे ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन इज हाइड्रोजन प्रोड्यूस्ड एंटायरली फ्रॉम रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी वी डू नॉट यूज कोल और व्हिच रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी इज इट मेड फ्रॉम मे बी सोलर और विंड आई मीन इट डज नॉट इन्वॉल्व फॉसिल फ्यूल्स इन इट्स जनरेशन एंड व्हाट अबाउट ब्लू हाइड्रोजन ब्लू हाइड्रोजन इज व्हेन यू प्रोड्यूस a uh, hydrogen through fossil fuels but then you use the carbon capture and utilization storage technology to offset the okay so when you have given this answer we don't need to discuss in more okay what is dehyphenation uh, ma'am dehyphenation is a policy where if we are dealing with two f- nations who are not in uh, sync or terms with each other we deal them on a separate basis we do not couple their relationships together an example would be israel palestine uh both of them have not shared good relations but india deals each of each with each one of them independently Wait, i'll now give you a situation you are say you are working in shakti nagar so you are dm of mirzapur okay and you hypothetically there has been a uh, lot of rains so there is flooding the ganga river has risen and it's flooding everything including mirzapur town it's coming there remote villages everything at the same time there is Vindhyavasini Devi ko leke there is some communal rights situation happening, okay, and you have to conduct the general election. Elections are around the corner in two thousand twenty four. So we visualize that you are there one year, one and a half year, one year later. So what would you do? You have just got posted as DM Mirzapur. Uh, in short term, it will be a resettlement and rehabilitation effort, evacuation and building of embankments or per- in the short term. Uh, in the short term resettlement okay. and rehabilitation in the long terms i would uh, go for capacity building as well as explore the opportunity of there are a lot of mines in the area which are empty so there sh- is a flood situation there are riots there is election you have just gone as dm what are the steps that you will take what will you do a rehabilitation resettlement kahan se aa raha hai priority wise first i would uh, how would you go about it uh for the rights i would call in the uh, cr oh, what is the priority of your actions priority what would you what would you do first of all uh, law and order you have just got posted there uh, law and order would be my first priority establishing law and order uh, so control the right. what would you do how would you do it uh, calling in the uh, required security forces crpf or the special action team and then uh, meeting with uh, leaders or people who representatives of the mob basically to understand their demands and pacify them if possible second would be calling in uh, local uh, ngos or people who are actively in touch with the peace committee kehte hain yeah peace hmm. committee ma'am yes uh, after dealing with rights i would go on to deal with floods and uh, elections ha ah, what would you do how would you do it floods would be my response would be first in to rope in to activate all the uh, sdrf and the local uh, disaster response team then uh, mobilize to do what a flood control measures first first will be evacuation of people who are trapped in flood situation second would be uh, providing them temporary shelter or uh, basic measures and then further going on uh, exploring long term measures of rehabilitation or uh, mm-hmm. uh, embankments or structures which avoid and elections would be election would be a scheduled phenomena wherein i would know the schedule and the kind of work that is to be done okay thank you now uh, you are an engineering background person you took electrical engineering in your examination tell me why this electric car experiment is not very successful in our country uh, yes sir i would point out to two reasons uh, one is the import dependence of key components required in electric vehicles such as the battery technology the converters the electronics and second is automobile sector is a very cost competitive market so today uh, the cost of electric vehicles for the same performance parameters have not achieved parity with compared to diesel or petrol versions of cars so for a customer uh, he would not prefer an electric vehicle just because it is environmentally sustainable would the situation be there for many years to come or somewhere this cost issues will be resolved for electrical cars sir i would say that as the technology matures more r&d works takes place the cost would come down with a parity an example would be uh, the example the cost of renewable power initially was very high but now solar and uh, thermal power add at, at are at parity cost to each other what is climate finance climate finance climate is finance. the money or uh, the funds which are used to uh, sponsor 
tech, uh, research and technologies being used to affect climate change in a positive way, such as sovereign green bonds or blue bonds. Have you heard about Ganga Vilas? Yes, sir. What is this Ganga Vilas? It's a cruise river cruise project, sir. Across the... Can you tell me the price of the cruise experience that one wants to have? Uh, sir, from what I have read in newspapers, it is approximately 50,000 per day or... <laughs> so, it is very expensive. Is it okay to make this kind of cruise available in a country like India? At this price point, uh, it would be it will not be able to attract the masses towards it and any experiment is successful only when people participate in large numbers so we need to bring the cost as we can have two separate tracks if we are dealing with high class or uh, premium or elite services we can keep these separate we need to develop a low cost efficient solution for this garib ganga vilas garib express of ganga vilas types <laughs> okay well uh, my dear friend, what is this Ravali politics? How we define Ravali politics? Is there any authentic definition of Ravali politics? Uh, sir, there is no authentic definition of Ravali politics, but it refers to the freebies distributed, promised during the election time by various political parties. What is Sensex? Sensex is sen the acronym for Sensitive Index. It represents the uh, share price of thirty top 30 or either stock 50, sir, I'm not sure. Top 30 companies listed in the stock exchange. Which is stock exchange? BSE and NSE, there are two. Uh, but sir, I'm not sure whether it is lifted, uh, listed in BSE or NSE, sir, I'm sorry. Why central government is not able to realize its disinvestment targets year after year? Yes, sir. Uh, there are reasons to it. One, it has not been able to uh, obtain the market price correctly. The valuation of the assets has not been done thoroughly or with due diligence. For example, BPCL, which could not be disinvested in the previous year, it had. Uh, uh, there were speculations that uh, because of the recession, crude oil prices uh, transient phenomena the valuation was not proper other than that the technologies which are being uh, put up for disinvestment they do not attract investors as most of the machinery or the industry are uh, outdated uh, already then they need renovation and modernization so investors do not want to put money into that and third would be i would say a lack of clear regulatory guidelines or regulatory uh, stability uh, the government has changed uh, its stance many times during the course of disinvestment, which do not inspire the investors' confidence. Rahul, have you heard about the market-based economic dispatch term being in the news recently? In terms of power sectors? Yes, power sector. Yes, sir. What is it? Uh, it basically refers to the cost, uh, the, when there is a less cost of power, it will get maximum demand. So the market is a cost sensitive market. So the cheaper your power is, it will be higher in demand compared to some power which is relatively expensive. Has it been implemented or is it just at a proposal stage? Uh, sir, it has been implemented. Are you sure it is being implemented? Sir, NTPC's few plans were chosen on a pilot scale. So our plant was one of them since it is a relatively old plant. So we are following the... So is it still at the pilot stage or it is in the full implementation stage? Uh, sir, the entire grid has not followed the market-based economy dispatch. So do you see any challenges in this? What are the practical challenges in the implementation? Yes, sir. Uh, there are two. Since the cost of power is less for thermal power plants which are old and old power plants are not efficient as well as they violate the emission norms, CPCB and Supreme Court guidelines. So running them poses a contradictory view to India's uh, Panchamrit commitments and green energy. Second would be integrating the renewables since renewables have been given a must run and a RPO status. You would have heard the term technical and commercial losses. Uh, can you explain what are they? Uh, yes, sir. AT and C losses, aggregate technical and commercial losses. Uh, technical losses refers, there are two parts to it. Technical losses refers to the uh, uncontrollable loss in the transmission lines because of the technology, copper loss and uh, loss due to insulating properties. And commercial losses is the ACS ARR gap, the average cost of supply compared to the average revenue realized. Why, why, why commercial losses occur? Because of inefficient billing and metering because of lack of penetration. So do you see any solution to this inefficient metering? Can this be covered by a technical solution? Yes, sir. 
smart metering and uh, uh, use of data analytics artificial uh, is the government doing anything related to smart metering yes sir as part of its uh, scheme revamped digital distribution sector scheme rdss uh, funds are being granted to uh, implement uh, digital states, smart meters are states implementing yes sir. what is the status right now how many smart meters have been installed or in terms of percentage uh, coverage at an all india level i'm sorry sir i'm not sure about okay okay Rahul, have you heard of the term Common Minimum Program? Yes, sir. What is that? It was the uh, broad agenda of the UPA government uh, in 2004. Only, only UPA government? Sir, I have heard it in the context of the okay, UPA government, ahead. sir. Uh, it was based on uh, certain common deliverables uh, of the government since it was a coalition government. For the coalition. coalition oh, okay. Government. So, talking about coalitions, there have been a lot of gadbandans, there are a lot of coalitions at regional level as well. But is, is there, because of, uh, let's say, there is lack of stability at the sta state level in present times. So, do you think that there should be some tweaks made to anti-defection law? Uh, there are the tweaks that should be made is the Honorable Speaker should be should decide the cases in a fixed timeline generally it is kept pending for uh, okay, many, one. many months i am not able to recollect uh, what exactly they are sir i am sorry uh, rahul you are from electrical background can you tell me the principle on which a transformer works uh, sir the name the faraday's law mm -hmm. based on faraday's law emf is induced in the conductor based on varying current so if there is a rate of change of current because of the inherent inductance in the copper coils, the EMF gets induced. They have to be necessary copper coils? No, uh, sir, any conducting element, mm -hmm. uh, because... Which, Why copper is preferred? Because it is, the conductivity value is high. It is one of the best conductors of electricity, as okay. well as low reluctance. Okay, and what about the frequency change from primary to secondary coil? Is there a change in any frequency? Sir, I'm not sure about it, I'm sorry. One last question from my side. Who is Jimmy George? Uh, Jimmy George uh, was a former Indian uh, volleyball champion who passed away in Italy. He was considered one of the greatest spikers of his era in the 70s. And what was his style? Why was he considered one of the greatest? Uh, sir, because he had one of the uh, greatest jumps in the game. He could reach above the net to a height which at that time was not very common. And her sister? Uh, Shri Anju Bobby George. Yeah, okay. Great, thank you. I think you summed it up very well. You did pretty well. Uh, the qualities we saw in you, one, you are calm. You don't get flustered. You don't get into issues. I mean, I provoked you with NTPC, Joshima, Tunnel, why this, why that, why that. You didn't get drawn into it. You just gave a very um, fact-based reply. You didn't get drawn into that or defensive or anything. It was very good. That was very good. You held your own in the right in the beginning. I purposely put you into a box and uh, you think, you answer, uh, you're pretty good. All the best. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. You'll do very well, but work hard a bit. Huh?